Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me yet again in Michigan with a Silverado EV work truck. If you haven't taken a look at our previous videos, I drove it for the first time and we've done some really cool things with this. However, today in this video, I wanted to talk about the work truck aspect and talk specifically about towing. Some of you know I do a lot of towing with electric vehicles. I just got back off of a 3,000 mile towing trip with my Rivian R1T. So having an electric truck that can actually tow over long distances with big range, big charging performance, lots of thermal management capability is hugely important to me personally. And in this video, we're gonna talk to some of the engineers about the Silverado EV's towing capacity. Now when the truck launched they claimed a 20,000 pound towing capacity. That still is up in the air is my impression. I'm not sure if we'll ever see that on Silverado EV but what I can tell you is even with the biggest battery pack it can tow 10,000 pounds. So what I first want to do is take you on a tour of this truck and trailer setup. I love that they set the hay bales in this 10,000 configuration and it does actually weigh 10,000 pounds. Uh, so I'll walk you through everything. I want to talk to one of the engineers and of course we're going to tow just about 10,000 pounds in this video with the Silverado. And as someone who does a ton of electric towing, I think this might be the best electric vehicle for what I need, which is towing over long distance. But there are some problems right off the bat. So let's go through the whole thing. This is all about towing with the Silverado EV. <laughs> So this particular setup we are not actually towing with, with the hay bales. We'll be towing a John Deere tractor, and you can see my friends Roman and Andre over there about to film for their TFL video towing. And definitely check that out because those guys are hardcore truck guys and highly recommend uh, getting their take on it. Certainly, you know with me, we're going to get a lot of the electric bits. And so that's what I'm really curious about in this. Now... Um, the truck is set up for maximum, first of all, payload of 1,400 pounds in this configuration. It has an over 200 kilowatt hour battery pack in it, so that's massive. The truck weighs, I want to say, they don't tell us exactly, but I think somewhere in the high 8,000 pound range. Let's see if we can find a sticker in here, because if GVWR is under... 10 or right around 10,000. Let's take a look. So GVWR is 9,990 pounds on this one and they claim you can put 1,400 pounds of payload in here. So the truck has to weigh you know 8,500 pounds plus or minus somewhere around there and so this is the yeah this is a production truck. This one's not uh, an EX VIN so this one should be relatively, um, you know, feel free to screenshot this. This should be uh, good for the 4WT trim. And we are on the Bridgestone uh, tires and wheels that are OE spec as well. So they say 1,400 pounds of payload. That gives us a rough idea of how much the truck weighs. Almost 9,000 pounds, very heavy, um, but not as heavy as Hummer EV. And also it can tow 10,000 pounds with a 10% tongue weight. So that is quite a bit of tongue weight you can put on here. Uh, and they also say a thousand pounds of tongue weight with this much weight on the back, they are not requiring a weight distribution hitch. For some of you who know with Rivian and Lightning, it's either required or heavily recommended to use a weight distribution hitch over 5,000 pounds. Talking to some of the engineers, it might be there in their official language, so don't quote me on this, but they're saying, hey, we did all the testing without weight distribution hitches and we were totally fine. So you can see they have an adjustable hitch on this particular one, looking very cool. Typical seven pin right here, going in, looking nice, nice trailer. And um, yeah, I mean, we'll talk to one of the engineers, but just to give you an idea, this setup, I'm also noticing not much sag on the truck. So for example, that Silverado RST over there, which is going to launch later this year and come to market end of 2023, that'll be very expensive, but very cool. That truck is going to be, um, you know, full air suspension, rear steer, all of that stuff. This Silverado is on full coil suspension. So it's fixed damper. It has a progressive rate spring in the rear. So as it sags, it actually gains a little bit extra pressure, which is very nice for towing. They have a relatively slow steering ratio on this, I think, to slow down the movements of the truck when towing. And we'll definitely talk to some engineers with that. But I told you that there was one problem right off the bat with this setup, and that is the charge port location. I cannot tell you how nice it is when I'm towing with my Rivian 
Uh, and by the way, the Rivian can tow more than this truck and can tow 11,000 pounds, but I actually believe it has less of a tongue weight capability than this. I'm thinking offhand, Rivian's tongue weight's only 500 pounds, but maybe I'm wrong on that, but this is a thousand pound tongue weight, so that's great. Uh, but I can't tell you how nice it is to pull into a charging station and just nose the thing in or just squeeze it over because putting the charge port in the back where 90% of your charging stations are reverse or pull in stations, you cannot charge this without unhooking. I mean, it would be almost impossible. You could pull alongside and block the entire charging station, but putting your charge port back here you know, I understand how useful it could be, especially as they switch to the Tesla connector and you pull into a Tesla supercharger and it's the correct location back here. Totally agree. But what I think they should have done was maybe in the towing package or towing rated trucks add a second charge port. Again, this truck that we're driving today is $77,990. By the time you pay taxes, whatever, it's an $80,000 truck. I mean, you could get tax credit and stuff, but this is not cheap. I think they could have put an extra charge port up here, similar to Taycan, which has the dual charge ports. I don't think we've seen any vehicles with dual DC charge ports yet, but perhaps that can come. Um, sorry for the camera movement there. I had a bee land on me, and some of you guys know bees truly freak me out. <laughs> anyway, let's talk to some of the engineers about this setup. Again, we're going to be towing with the tractor over there. Very much looking forward to that. I think that's just over 9,000 pounds. It's almost 10,000 pounds. They have the Blazer over here, the RST Silverado, and the Equinox EV. But that, this is what I'm curious about, the electric towing portion today. So let's do it and let's hook this thing up and go for a drive. I also just love how they got the 10,000 here with the hay bells, that's awesome. Since we're on the topic of work truck stuff, towing things, let me just show you some other cool displays that uh, Chevy has brought out for, you know, to demonstrate the working capabilities of this truck, things that would be really useful for you and me. First of all, you can see the bed totally open. It's five foot 11 bed in the work truck. The work truck does not get the mid gate that folds down, which can extend this all the way to a 10 foot bed, which is crazy. Actually, even a little bit more than that. It's really cool. But there's actually some onboard power capabilities here as well that I want to talk about. So they have a 30 amp, 240 volt connection here. Same as lightning. It's a weird connection, but you can do it there. So that's good. You have two different stacks of 120 volt outlets here, NEMA 520s. So you can pull about seven to 10 kilowatts out of this truck all together, which is really great. And then they also have this Ultium situation here that I wanted to show you. So this is sort of a V to L like Hyundai situation where this plugs into your J1772 and then allows for about three kilowatt output or so through the port over here on the side. So you can plug it in, you have about a 25 foot cape cable run, and I think that's just awesome to see. Now there's a few different versions of this, by the way, I believe this is actually manufactured by SeaTech, which makes, you know, trickle chargers for cars and stuff, and then GM put the Ultium thing on here, but I believe it's UL rated, they're handling all of that is my understanding. And uh, there's also gonna be a 30 amp, 125 volt option, which I'll show you here just briefly in the next clip, what they're doing with that. But you can see, you can put some plywood in the back. Works out pretty great. You can of course charge really whatever you want. They got some Milwaukee tools here. They got some DeWalt's. And uh, let me show you over here as well. So they have the trucks powering some saws real work stuff over here <laughs> i mean once you have power you can do whatever you want with it this is just a showcase of it but i am liking the accessory racks they have here this is really cool that they've installed sort of this rail system and this one you can see has sort of a drop-in bed liner it's definitely not spray in it's a total drop-in and i don't imagine that that's standard because that truck over there has no bed liner, uh, but I do really like this liner. I think it's nice. They round the edges properly, tie down points in the bed. You have one here, one here, lighting as well, two up front, which works okay. And then I'm loving this rail system. This is just next level. This is mega. Being able to slide things, bolt them down, able to use them when you need to. This is really, really great stuff here. So loving this. Um, we got to talk to Sam at Overland Rough Racks, of course, and see if he can build a full, you know, full-size truck overlanding rack for this thing, especially for when the trail boss comes out. It's going to be sick. And um, yeah, I mean, I've already shown you the interior. If you watch the first drive videos at all, this is full work truck spec here. 
So maybe a little bit lesser grade plastics and things. Everything's black, but textured nicely. And still, I, I really actually quite like it. I think they put a lot of content in this thing and they kind of need to because, yeah, this is, a, again, almost $80,000 truck all the money going to that massive battery pack. So there's just some work truck displays for you so you can see this stuff. You can really do whatever you want with the power. Let me show you that 30 amp connection on the way out and then we'll get to towing. So scary. <laughs> Hell Thank yeah, you. brother. <laughs> So Yuri and Jacob are just finishing up their shoot. We're gonna take the truck right after them. I'm gonna grab Josh, who's actually one of the towing engineers, or well, I should say full chassis ride and handling engineer. I'll get his full title for you. But this is what we're towing, a John Deere 440R, but then it's also a 4075R H R. So we are taking this truck on a towing adventure, 65% state of charge right now. I'm joined by my friend Josh, who is on the engineering team as we have some rock stuff going on here. So Josh, let's stand over this way just so yeah. for audio. But can you explain your exact role in this truck? As I understand it, a lot of the magic of how it drives comes from you and your team. Oh, it's certainly more the team than myself. Uh, there's a lot of great people that have worked on the program from a ride and handling perspective. I am the ride and handling engineer for the for the vehicle, um, but to give credit to the, all the other guys on the team, there's a group of four, five, six of us that have really done a lot of work in simulation um, and doing a lot of the advanced development. I'm just kind of taking the ball across the finish line. So. It's amazing. Yeah, I got to meet some of your colleagues and the way you guys work, super hardcore, I would say nerd level 9000 when it comes to chassis tuning. And it's been wonderful to talk to you guys and learn more about the truck. But what we have right here is roughly how much weight do you think we're pulling behind the truck? Uh, about 9,000 pounds. Okay, so um, almost maxing it out then. Correct. Yep. And with these, with this 9,000 pounds, is it set up for roughly 10% tongue weight? Um, we, we actually purposely set this up just to make sure that the trailer was level. Um, we didn't go measure the tongue load on okay. the trailer. Yep. We wanted to kind of show this more as like what a customer would do. Okay. Uh, we would hope and urge our customers to figure out what the tongue load is before they go do trailering, but sure. we, we know a lot of people don't do it. Yep. So it was purposely done that way. Very cool. Well, we're definitely going to jump inside the truck, but I want to talk a little bit about the engineering stuff on there. And I just have to give a shout out to our sponsor, Nokian Tires, for having <laughs> Nokian Tires. I did not know they made tractor tires. I didn't know they tires. <laughs> yeah, they, they rock for the winter. We I run studded Nokians all winter on all the cars and works out great um have you ever done chassis tuning on like really soft winter tires yes it's hilarious it's, how it changes quite a bit yes I would uh, love steering response to grades there's a little more shake in the vehicle um but different tires have different uh performance requirements so. yeah totally well you yeah, know we love nokian tires for winter uh can we talk a little bit about what's going on in the rear of the truck because the work truck version again you have the biggest battery but with coil suspension and typically yeah. when you're going coil suspension you know it's hard to tune for all use cases of the truck because everything's a compromise yeah. you also have irs which is you know maybe not the best setup for hardcore towing so what 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 had to go on with the rear of this truck there's actually a lot of tuning elements that we touched in the back of the truck um just start off with from uh customer perspective the, the truck has a progressive rate rear spring we went through a lot of tuning iterations on that um, to get the truck to have a good compromise of on-road driving dynamics uh, when you're unloaded and also have good trailing and payload uh, performance um, so I think we've really struck a, gr a great balance there. Um, the truck rides great when it's unloaded and you barely notice that there's a load when you have the vehicle at uh, max uh, capacity from payload perspective as well. Very cool. Now, of course, you've done a lot of certifying and testing, maybe some subjective tests, objective tests with towing. What is your impression? Obviously, you've driven all the trucks competition while towing, doing some benchmarking, not asking you to directly compare, but what's your impression of how this truck tows with a trailer? I'm excited. I'm really excited about it. Uh, the performance of the truck, I hope will speak for itself in this evaluation. Um, I love it. I sometimes forget there's a trailer back there. Um, I also love driving and not being shaken to death because we don't have any cab mounts. We don't have a frame. Um, so there's there's a lot of really cool things that are going on from a ride and handling 
perspective and also as it relates to trailering. Very cool. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I think the biggest news for me with this as a towing rig, I was explaining to you, I tow with my electric truck often, just having the extra capacity in the battery pack, uh, you know, almost twice the usable capacity, more or less, as what I have in my Rivian just means almost probably twice the distance while towing, close to. Um, so I'm really looking forward to one day doing the towing test yeah. of this versus Lightning versus Rivian. And, uh, you know, this is obviously just going to smoke everything. So for me, that's why I have such an appeal for this truck with the big battery. So let's jump inside. Let's camera up and let's go for a quick cruise. Cool. I just want to ask, the trailer has double brakes in the rear? Yeah. Okay, so it's braked and we can use the integrated trailer brake controller. Right. We can set that up. Uh, we can actually show that on camera if you're interested in that. Yeah, too. that sounds great. Let's go through the whole thing. Thanks. So you join us inside the Silverado now, and the first thing we were just discussing was the tow haul mode. And if you guys watch the full I Drive the Silverado for the first time video, you'll notice when I hit that, the mileage estimated dropped significantly, as it will pretty much proportionally to combustion trucks, mm -hmm. is what we find. Um, and actually in your testing on that topic, we always found in our tests when we do tow testing that the weight almost doesn't matter when towing. I mean, it does a bit, but it's all aero. Um, yeah, the, the bigger factor when towing and seeing the decay to the, the mileage of the range is, is really the aero factor. Yeah, okay. So at least our numbers are somewhat correct there. Yeah, and <laughs> cool. I also add that if, if you have uh, an ICE vehicle and an EV vehicle, Pulling the same trailer on the same day, you're going to see a very similar amount of depreciation in the range that you're going to have. That would be a great test for us to do sometime. Yeah. I think that's add that to the video idea list. Um, so we're in the truck. We got 9,000 pounds on the back of us, roughly. Yeah. We got the Nokian tire equipped tra <laughs> tractor. We're ready for um, it all. So, how would you set up the truck for towing? What do you recommend customers do? Um, we, we would like customers to take the truck across scales and, and get 10% on the tongue. Yeah. Um, that's what we're doing our certification to. Mm -hmm. Um, we do tests outside of that. Sure. Um, but for safest and best, um, performance, that's what we would ask for. 10% tongue really is what the truck's set up for. That, and then we'd also urge customers to go back to the owner's manual and, um, brief that before doing any towing as well. Right. But like three people will do that. So what is the, <laughs> <laughs> what is the actual tow haul button do to a stability control braking perspective? What, what is hitting that button change on the truck? Um, it's, it's mostly steering efforts. That's okay. a big one. We put higher, um, EPS assist, mm -hmm. um, or excuse me, we increase the effort. So we reduce the assist. Mm -hmm. Then we also go to a different pedal map to give you a little bit more uh, power. Oh, interesting. Okay. And then from a stability control When you say more power, do you mean more total output? No. Or just more modulation? It's mapped. Differently. Okay. Okay. Got it. So it's a little bit more of an aggressive map. Correct. Got it. That makes sense. Because um, I was going to say that could be the new sport mode button, which it was in all the old combustion trucks to haul the, the revs hang up a little bit more. Uh, cool. So I'm also noticing I have all my trailer brake gain here. So we're set at five, which is always a good place to start when you have some load on there. Have you played around with this setup as all? Did yeah. You, do you know what you're recommending? Um, I'd probably bump it down to, to two or three. Okay, um, cool. Yeah, it's start, start there. And if you want, yeah. you can do a little cream test and yeah. hit the brake and just make sure that right, right, make sure it grabs a little bit, but we're yeah. on rock. So we'll just make sure it's connected properly. Um, in the system here, is there a way to tell the truck what kind of trailer you have or anything like that? Um, there is a trailering app in here. I'll okay. Go yeah, that. sure. So we so can, you can go explore here. what's going on in here. Yeah. So trailer apps, we have our brakes, we have a light test, which is great. We've seen this from your combustion trucks, of right. course, and then a checklist. So everything in here is pretty similar to what we've seen before. Um, and as we're driving, I'm sure I'll have more questions to ask you, but we'll throw it in drive. Just gonna slightly adjust mirrors, but we're looking good. And um, let's say if you want to take off here, we'll take a left out of the, the grounds here. And what are you recommending for one pedal with trailer? Go high? You can you do whatever you like. Well, um, you were telling me that you I, really prefer high. Me personally, I am a one pedal high uh, yeah. driver. Um, I will also add that coming from being a petrol head outside of work. Yep. Um, That's right. I've, yeah. I've converted. Into real cool cars. <laughs> <laughs> I've kind of, kind of converted over to one pedal high. And Which I, way are we going here? Turn left. left. Okay. I, I just love the modulation that it gives you and the uh, stability it gives you. Right. That's awesome. Man, this is a pretty long trailer. It feels like almost a maybe 22 foot trailer, 25 foot trailer, somewhere around there. You got a friend over here. Yeah, I got a bug in the car. <laughs> So instantly already noticing, um, you know, towing with the Rivian versus this is going to be the real thing for me because the Rivian, I mean, I, I, 
I know you can't comment on it, but it has uh, some really cool suspension technology going on from a uh, height and load leveling, but also a roll stability perspective, mm -hmm. which pretty much makes it a night and day difference in my impression, towing with that truck and the Lightning. Yeah. And then this truck, obviously you'll have different variants coming down the line Correct. with an air suspension to do those level situations and maybe some roll stuff. But um, the right off the bat, first of all, the truck's really quiet. You can't hear the motors, um, but I can already tell what you were talking about with the steering just being a little bit lighter on the front. Yeah. Um, but then the tow mode, of course, reduces that electric assist make it a little bit nicer so correct toes nice and straight um, we're not like you were saying feeling any of this bucking motion or the cab shake or anything like that which is really awesome which is something you do feel in the lightning to be transparent I know you can't say it but I can say it. Uh, so in terms of like longevity over a long distance trip again you spec this to be a work truck the seats are incredible in this yeah very you comfortable can, and you spend a lot of time and, in them <laughs> and the other thing is i mean they're easy to clean too right so if you're a work truck kind of guy you're probably getting dirty on sure. a daily basis yeah. and you want to have that uh ease of cleanliness to your vehicle I'll right clean it up every now and then absolutely and i uh, i mean i'm loving the work truck spec this kind of has everything you need in it um, and more <laughs> and yeah, definitely for like a work truck this is really like nice said before it's, it's kind of has an identity crisis for a totally level vehicle so when you're doing trailer tow testing and certification are you testing you know campers or are you doing like just like a trailer no one would actually buy with some synthetic weight on there or something like that um yeah for most of the development work we have uh we do have all different types of trailers we do connect all different types of trailers to the vehicle um mainly what we're doing is shifting weight uh so we achieve the 10 percent load we do go up and down from there uh, mm -hmm. to a limited uh, percentage um and then from an objective perspective we look at things like uh sway trailer okay. sway and do you um, there, there are the ways to control correct. to interact with that yep and there are ways to objectively score that sway okay um so we do do those measurements and then the other big one that we do is we, we check understeer uh, at different trailer loading conditions to okay. make sure that you always have the tow vehicle in front of the trailer right the last thing you want is trailer oversteer correct and so the truck is maybe even set up as a compromise on the street slightly for the towing capabilities uh, is that or do you think you're able to tune both in? i think with the the spring setup that we mentioned before mm -hmm. um we actually do a pretty good job of i mean it's not perfect you're not going to mm -hmm. optimize one because it is a passive suspension yeah um so you really do have to make a compromise for unloaded versus loaded conditions yeah um, noticing but, that pedal map right there yeah so much more aggressive off the line also regen high feels We'll do a regen test over the crest here, yeah. and uh, no one's behind us, so that'll be great. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. That's okay. Um, another thing, as you're mentioning regen, um, one thing that we would like to talk about a little bit is the ability for the truck uh, regen system and the trailer brakes to be working um, in concert together. Right. Um, so we are utilizing both, and what we do oh, from really? a regen perspective is we max out the amount of regen that the truck is asking for before we do anything. So there's full regen, 220 Correct. kilowatts of regen. Well, and if you go up in vehicle speed, you'll be it able get, to see. Well, I've seen as high as 399 displayed, yeah. which I think is the maximum. Yeah, have you seen over 400? I won't comment. Okay. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> the most I could get the Hummer EV to do at least was 399. Yeah. And I was like, damn, that's the most amount of regen you, you ever. You probably see it coming uh, off the interstate at 80 miles an hour. Yeah, I had to get to the it. speed like yeah. way up there. Yeah. And then I had to do some brake pedal blending for it to get up as well. Yeah. So when you're doing max regen with a trailer, you're actually blending in some friction brake on the trailer? Uh, yeah. Okay, very smart. There's, there's a lot of... It's kind of a trade-off, right? Because there's a lot of kinetic energy with that amount of mass moving the specific vehicle speed, right? Totally. And so from a regen perspective and if a driving efficiency perspective, it's smart to be able to capture that kinetic energy and put it back into the battery. Yeah, you still want um, to prioritize but, but, regen but, over but everything. But there also is some safety things that we have to be totally cognizant of and make sure from a safety perspective that um, we're managing that certainly so i'm thinking okay i crest the eisenhower tunnel at i-70 and we're coming down the backside, which i'm towing across there you know once a week something sure. like this and uh you know in theory we'll be using this for tow testing over there as well i can uh, imagine so when when we're coming down that hill is there a point to say you know because sometimes i'm like i don't actually need to slow down i just want to max out regen and have no friction brakes is there a trick to just doing regen on the truck without any blending on the trailer um, I think what you're asking is, uh, are you talking specifically if I'm going downhill, is there a way yeah. that I can 
regen and keep my vehicle speed? Yeah, well, no, just, just regen and not have any friction brake action because I'm okay gaining vehicle speed uh, as long as I'm maxing out regen. You can also turn the trailer brake controller uh, to zero gain. Oh, so so putting this to zero gain uh, uh, when you're, you know, of course, cruising along, that will kill regen blending. It'll, it'll improve that okay. for your specific purpose. I mean, for stability, there's a risk. Of course, yeah. but uh, no, that's cool. I'm glad you guys. Uh, but we still do have trailer sway algorithms that are working to be able to catch you if you are getting into a, a situation okay. that would be. So can you talk to more be. about trailer sway control? Because that's been fascinating. Because <laughs> I watch like every YouTube video of like moose test with a trailer to sway control on and off, etc. Um, what, what? How does that? work what happens if I do a a hard input let's say off throttle and we start to get trailer oversteer um, what we're doing is we're activating specific corners of the vehicle at a specific instance in time to be able to create a yaw moment in the vehicle that will combat what the trailer sway is doing interesting so, so you're actually making amount. the truck do something it doesn't want to do um, we're hindering it from doing what the trailer is pushing it, it to do okay that's yeah. a that's a good way of putting it yeah so regen on high when towing, definitely the move. Yeah, it, I mean, personally, it's a, it's a comfort thing, um, but also from an efficiency and, a, and an energy recuperation perspective, it, it makes total sense. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we'll just do a quick acceleration run. Not great please, to do please. crazy stuff, but just the power, that's wide open there with 9,000 pounds in the back, 45, 50, 55, 60 right there. I mean, it has more than enough power to get out of its own way. And it's quiet. It makes no noise. You're actually pumping in some fake sound. There is a little bit of that. Is there yeah. a way to turn that off? <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad, but <laughs> no, it's but it but it gives you the the audible feedback of what you're asking the vehicle to do. Absolutely, um, yeah. So it is that kind of closed loop to the driver that says, "Okay, I'm commanding this, but yes. now you don't have a, a V8 um, screaming at you, telling what telling you what the truck's doing." Right, so and, there and is no some hunting for gears and all this yeah, stuff. It's just nice, smooth linear acceleration. Yeah, I mean, I would say in terms of towing estimates the fact that we have 9,000 pounds in the back with a fairly non-aerodynamic trailer and Yuri and Jacob just drove this and did wide opens you know they did some crazy stuff this thing is showing 143 miles at 60 percent or so dude I can't get that on my truck at full <laughs> that is crazy yeah. uh, so just the usability but I have to ask you the charging port location <laughs> with towing. You may, you may. It's fine if you find the one pull through station in the whole state of Michigan. But what? I mean, you've done towing tests and driving yeah. these things. Do you yep. have to unhook every time? Um, it depends on the station. Yeah. Um, currently, the way that the charger uh, stations are set up, especially the EA stations that we typically are going to, just from a, a chart or energy uh, onboarding perspective. Sure. Um, a lot of the stations have stations set up at the curb. Yes. And so in order to connect to those, you have to disconnect the trailer, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. The other solution is some of the stations are actually out in the middle of the parking um, stall. Yep. Yeah. And those ones are actually more convenient. Um, yeah. You do unfortunately have to have the tree, if you leave the trailer connected, it yeah. is out in the main aisle of the parking lot. Sure. But, but if you're a little bit night at Walmart, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But um, you don't want to be would, that guy, yeah. which sometimes I'm that guy, but you don't want to be that guy. I, I would add with our Ultium um, Pilot partner, Yeah, uh, we're, we're partnering with Pilot. Yep. Um, we are going to be having, we, we understand that this is a, an issue with EV truck customers towing trailers. And we are working with them to develop solutions for pull through charging stations. Right. So it, it doesn't exist now, but we are working on it and we, we understand the issue on our solve that no I think that's that's great that'll be amazing because um, ultimately let's just say no matter what you throw on the back of this my prediction normal exterior conditions driving normally 200 miles is pretty reasonable to expect to get you know leaving the house or the ranch or whatever fully charged yeah. with the trailer and I'm sure you've done some treks that are around that distance with a pretty heavy trailer yeah. but um, when it comes time to recharge, that's when those pull-throughs are so needed. So I'm glad you're investing in some of that stuff. I'd say that that's a good talking point. The other one is um, when we do arrive at these charge stations, we have 350 kilowatt capable charge solution, right? Yes. So the amount of time that we're actually there is, I mean, you can onboard uh, 100 miles in 10 minutes. Now right. that's not without, that's a number, without <laughs> So 50 without miles in yeah. 10 minutes, let's say. But, but it's still, it, it's, it's reasonable. 
that is so next level. And I have to ask you because it's been a hot topic on our channel, sort of thermal management systems with electric trucks and towing and plugging them in and Lightning has the dual compressor situation which actually does keep the pack fairly cool. I've never overheated a Lightning, but on my Rivian I have a lot of thermal management issues, especially when towing where you're outputting a lot of energy and then you are, uh, you know, of course putting in that case of that truck 200 kilowatts, a lot less than what even this can take at its maximum. How in your experience, I know you're not a thermal engineer. Yeah, but, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, but, but you drive the trucks a lot. So how are you noticing the charging performance over multiple charging stops, as an example? I haven't, unfortunately, had an issue. And I'm not just saying yeah. that to say that, but yeah. when we've done our towing work, um, I haven't experienced an issue. Really? Amazing. So the thing just rips every time? Uh, yeah. That's it, great. It's more, um, the bottleneck is usually the charger. Yes, certainly. Um, not certainly. so much the truck. Um, yeah, we see that often, of yeah. course, sadly. Uh, but that's why you guys are building out your own network and you're going to Tesla. Yeah. So we're very thrilled about all of that as well. I think this thing, towing, having access to the supercharger network, having access to those pilot pull-through stations, uh, it is now the new benchmark electric tow vehicle. You know, it, it, excluding like a, a Volvo VNR semi or something, yeah. a Tesla semi. Yeah. But you know, for an everyday you know guy, especially where we live in northern Colorado, right on that edge of Wyoming, we have a lot of guys that honestly are progressive and drive electric. And a good friend of mine is a rancher and drives a Rivian, and I know he'll be the first one to get one of these with the big battery because he just wants the most towing range. Well, it just opens so many doors of possible uh, solutions that you, you didn't know that it was really ever a problem, right? Totally. Um, talk about you know pulling up to a job site uh, having tools you can recharge it um, you can charge whatever you're doing too um, yeah that's you know, true things like you know electric dirt bikes and stuff coming and electric boats coming yeah. out the market so it's, it's just the we're in the wild west of, of EVs and you know having a truck that's an EV yeah um, it's just really an exciting time to be a part of the, the market and I got to say we're on a fairly bumpy road I'm just keeping some slight consistent throttle application the truck is so rock solid going down with this much weight on the back. Now, granted, I know when you start getting into 3,500 or 4,500 trucks, you know, 9,000 pounds is nothing, but considering what this truck is built for, that it has a 10,000 pound GVWR, it's still light duty, essentially. Correct. The fact that it can tow this competently is, I would say, really next level, also considering it's a fixed coil suspension. Correct. So how much of a play was that progressive rear spring in your impression what how much is that helping us over these little bumps a lot i can it's, imagine it's a, it's a very big uh, have you tried towing with one without the progressive spring uh no all, okay. of, all of our springs have always been progressive in uh in design yep. uh, from a tuning perspective we, we just had several iterations of what we wanted to change and we we're very deliberate about those changes to achieve the result we were looking for and you know, obviously this is not like towing over I-70 in the mountains or anything like that, but just having that power, having the thermal ability to handle the big power output at 350 kilowatt charging. And we say 350 kilowatt charging, you can actually slightly get a little bit more if you find the right charger. I know you can't confirm that, but I've seen some more. Uh, it's next level. So I can't thank you enough for joining me on this towing yeah, experience. Really appreciate your uh, truck drives great. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's great having you here and your expertise in the market as well. No, so, thank you, and and thanks for your expertise in the market because you're building cool stuff that we get to drive. Uh, so thank we'll you. see you all on a future episode soon. Hopefully, we'll do some more videos in the future That's together. Great. It would be, be awesome. This guy super nerd when it comes to vehicle engineering. <laughs> we going right here? Yes. Okay. Awesome. I mean, it was really thank you again for for you know taking us on this and walking me through a lot of the things to understand how the truck was engineered. That's why it's kind of invaluable for us to come on these programs. Yeah, we have a we have a really passionate team. There's a lot of really smart people that are putting their minds together and, and overall we, we really enjoy working together and when you enjoy uh, your job, I think that the product kind of ends up speaking for itself. Totally. So. And, you know, we'll just end on a wide open with the trailer because why not? So here we are, full set. A little bit of uh, just some movement on the front axle. Just got to put in a little, I don't know if it's torque steer or what's going on. But road camber. Road camber. There you go. It's pulling us one way. <laughs> yeah, always blame the road. <laughs> See you on another one soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.